So you've overthrown Castillo and the FND are on the run. Or maybe you're well on your way to liberating Yara. Either way, let's look ahead to what the future has in store for you. Hey there friends, it's Kodiak here. Welcome back to Legacy Gaming. Today, I'm breaking down the end game and sharing the five big things you can do once you beat Far Cry 6. Like most modern games, Far Cry 6 has an endgame, and in typical Ubisoft fashion, that endgame is on a weekly cycle. The goal here is to be ready to take on those challenges as soon as possible so you don't miss out on exclusive loot. What I'm talking about are insurgencies. This is actually a pretty cool concept in theory. Anton is gone, but the FND are still loyal to the idea of true Yara, so on a weekly basis, they take back a region and you have to re-liberate it. I actually quite like that. It makes the world feel pseudo-alive, even though most of the major threats are gone. To complete an insurgency, you need to tackle multiple objectives, like retaking checkpoints or re-clearing FND bases. Ultimately, you have to do a special op, which are instanced high-level content where you have to extract some of that deadly Vaviro poison from the area. Over time, more content is going to be added to this particular system, and I think it provides a constant source of fun. You can even matchmake if you want to take on these special ops with a co-op partner, and I think that's pretty neat. Completing special ops and insurgencies reward you with Monada, a secondary in-game currency that you can use at the black market vendor. This is important because that Monada can be used to purchase overclocked weapons, which have more attachments and mod slots than standard weapons. These are easily going to be the best guns in the game because of the flexibility they provide players. But if you're not at that point yet, that's okay. There's still plenty else to do. One of the best things to build up your pool of resources from pesos to crafting materials is by utilizing the Los Bandidos operations. This is something you unlock pretty early on, but you might have been ignoring it while you focus on other things. I'm here to tell you that this is something you absolutely need to pay attention to. Each mission needs a leader, sometimes two. And if you don't travel off the beaten path, you might miss all the opportunities to recruit some new blood. I put together a quick list and map for all of you so you know where you can recruit each leader. The first leader everyone gets, it's Benito. He's part of the main story and unlocks the entire Los Bandidos operation system. The second leader everyone gets is Alfredo Maximo. To unlock him, you need to focus on the Legends of 67 and the La Morale questline. Eventually, he'll join your team once you complete the Our Right to Party main quest. East of Balisteris, there's a quest called Wing and a Prayer. Do this to unlock Isabella and Marisol, a two-for-one special that nets you two leaders. To unlock Sergio, you need to complete two quests. The first is Undercover Stud. You can actually start this once you unlock the La Morale base. Gilberto will just give you the quest in the secret hideout in Concepcion. If you've already completed the main story, Gilberto will be in a different location here. Once you complete that entire quest line, you unlock Sergio. Freddy Jr. is our next leader. You can find him on the east side of Cruz del Salvador. You need to clear three FND bases and return his dad's stolen baseball gear, but once you do that, he'll join Libertad. Big Poppy is another leader you can unlock. You can actually force this questline to start by heading to the island here, where his plane was shot down. The final leader is Zanaya. She can be found in the safe house in South Esperanza. Complete her quest, paint the town to unlock her. With all your Bandito leaders in place, you can now assign them to operations that will net you stupid amounts of resources. It's the single best way to build up pesos, materials, crafting resources, whatever, and it's something you can do right now, whether you're in the end game or not. Far Cry has been and will always be about finding guns, and there are plenty out there for players to track down. If you've beaten the game or you're just not happy with your loadout, I definitely recommend going to track down some unique weapons. There are so many options out there for players to use, and while they're not all created equal, you have the awesome ability to inspect them before you find them so you can tailor your efforts towards the weapons you think you might use. If you're heading into the endgame, I definitely suggest a decent launcher, and there are a couple of cool options out there. If you're still struggling for stealth, there are a number of great rifles in the mix that you can check out as well. In fact, we've just put out a video ranking all of the unique rifles in the game, so maybe give that video a watch if you're looking for some ideas. The long and short of it is this. Unlocking weapons is fun. It's that shot of dopamine we video game fans live for, and the Ubisoft team did a good job putting together some unique weapons for players to find and test out. While it's not required by any stretch, I think it'd be wise for you to finish upgrading your base. Upgrading vehicles like the Hideout Network are paramount to unlocking awesome Resolver vehicles that can get you around Yara quickly. Other buildings like the Guerrilla Garrison will give you access to new weapons that you can buy outright. 
Because all the FND caches are randomized, it can be a pain to track down all the standard variations of guns, and by upgrading this building, you're giving yourself a little shortcut. Other buildings, like the Hunter's Lodge, might not seem important, but by upgrading that building, you can kill pretty much any prey animal and never damage the meat. That means when you're short on resources, you can trade them in for some serious materials. It's just a good idea all around to upgrade your various bases. If you're like me and plan on following the game all the way through the DLCs and updates, you never know what sort of things Ubisoft will add, and by being overprepared, you know you'll be ready for whatever they throw your way. Here's the deal. You either love Amigos or you hate them. For me personally, I found that they got in the way more than they helped, but I don't think that's their fault. Bad coding, constantly resummoning them, weird pathing, these are all gameplay issues that prevented me from really liking that system. That being said, you have to unlock these little guys. I mean, it's just part of the deal. While Chorizo may not be the most capable companion, it's just one of those things that you can't leave half completed. There are only a small handful of amigos to unlock in the game, and once again, I want to quickly show you where these quest lines all start. Guapo is unlocked almost immediately at the start of the game, so no real need to break that down anymore. Chorizo's quest line starts at Montero Farm. He's got a little house there and will run around barking until you start his first quest, Who's a Good Boy? It's a simple quest line that doesn't take more than 10 to 15 minutes. Chicharron is probably the most elusive of the amigos. To start his quest line, head slightly northwest of this checkpoint here in Sierra Perdida. That will kickstart this entire quest line. This one's a bit more involved and takes a little bit of fighting, so just be prepared before starting. To get Boom Boom, head to Sanaga Nublada National Park. There you'll find a note with an exclamation point. This will unlock the Boom or Bust side quest. It's a pretty straightforward quest and rewards you with your old friend from Far Cry 5. Finally, we have Aluso. To unlock this Shadow Cat, you need to complete the legendary Triada Blessing side quest. We have an entire video breaking this down on our channel, so give that a watch to find out how you can get this amigo and an awesome set of legendary gear. She's the perfect stealth companion, so if you're into that, there you go. The final thing you should definitely be working on is unlocking all of your attachments. One thing I wish I had included in our Wish I Knew Sooner video was the fact that weapon attachments are global based on weapon type. For example, once you unlock an attachment for a rifle, it's unlocked for all rifles. That being said, there are a lot of weapon types and a lot of attachments, so you'll need to do some serious material farming if you want to unlock them all. That's why I included the Los Bandidos tip, because that's a great way to build up your resource pool. You can also hit FND bases, AA sites, and checkpoints, which all have guaranteed FND caches. It's a pain, but you need a lot of gunpowder to unlock everything in the game. Remember, once you can buy things from the black market, you have access to overclocked weapons, which have more attachments and mod slots, which means the ability to create super weapons. But you need to do the legwork now in order to be prepared for that time. Like I mentioned before, trading in hunting and fishing items is incredibly good. There are a number of armor pieces in the game that make those things even easier, and if you're struggling for resources and don't want to run through a million buildings, it's definitely worth going old school, hunting some animals, and turning their meat into some materials. Of course, there are more things that you can be doing, like unlocking armor pieces or scanning new vehicles into your database, but I wanted to keep this video relatively short and sweet. If you have already finished the game, I'd love to know what you did first, right after finishing the story. Everyone goes about open world games completely differently, so share your experiences in the comment section below. I also want to quickly thank you all for your support on our Far Cry 6 videos. Our Wish I Knew Sooner video is steadily growing every day, and our other videos are still gaining traction. We would not be here making videos without your support, so thank you to our incredible community. If you guys do like our videos and you want to help out Legacy Gaming even more, you can support us by becoming a member. For just a couple bucks a month, you're helping evolve the channel to take our community to that next level. Check out the join button below to learn more. My name is Kodiak, and from everyone here at Legacy Gaming, thanks for watching and play on.